Okay, so we're ready for the next chapter, which is chapter nine. But we're on to a new day. Everything that just happened all happened on Monday. The name of Monday's, all of the Monday was, it was chicken fingers. So now we have Tuesday, and Tuesday is called hamburger. And if you look at the cover of this of the book, now it's starting to make some sense, right? So the blue, the blue um, lunch plate has a hamburger on it. So I would assume that's what Joe is eating. And the orange lunch plate is what Ravi is eating. So different kind of food, right? Okay, so Tuesday hamburgers, chapter nine, Ravi. So this is from his perspective. I lay out my math notebook, which Emma and I have carefully covered with brown paper. The label in neat cursive says, Ravi Suryanan, grade five, Albert Einstein, elementary school, mathematics. It is my mother's handwriting. We went to Staples together last week to buy all the school supplies, but she insisted on writing the labels herself. Even Perry Emma has to admit that Amma's handwriting is beautiful. Your book is the first thing your teacher will notice, Ravi, Amma told me carefully as she wrote my name on one of the white smooth labels. First impressions matter. Now, sitting at my desk, I run my hand over my math notebook and smile. In India, I was the winner of the math Olympiad three years in a row. I know all my multiplication tables till 20. Appa is right. There's nothing wrong with showing off a little. I am sure that after this morning, Mrs. Bean will realize what kind of student I am. And this silly business about Miss Frost and special help will be over. I placed my new pencil box next to my notebook Anna made sure that every item on the school supplies list was bought. Three mechanical pencils, two erasers, a six inch ruler, two highlighters, four ruled notebooks, and a pack of 3M post-its. I kept looking over at Mrs. Beam, but I don't think that she noticed how well prepared I am. She's busy writing on the whiteboard. In India, we only had blackboards. I love the soft scraping noise that the chalk made and the smell of the dusty erasers. The desk in front of me is empty. I wonder if Dylan Samreen will be absent today, but at the last minute he comes rushing into class and takes his seat. I'm glad my new friend is going to be here to witness what is about to happen. I'm sure he will be impressed. What do you think boys and girls? Do you think he's gonna be impressed? All right. Let's do a quick review, Mrs. Beam announces. Easy peasy when I see the math problems. Mrs. Beam has written on the board. Is this what fifth grade in America, fifth graders in America are doing? I was expecting something much harder, like maybe order of operations or something to do with decimals and fractions. The big guy who sits behind me, you know that's Joe, is groaning and moaning. I turn around to see what's wrong with him and I notice his name card for the first time. Joe Sylvester. As I'm reading his name, Joe Sylvester suddenly looks up. I smile, but he doesn't smile back. I can't believe kids in America are allowed to come to school looking like him. In India, we had to wear uniforms with dress pants, a collared shirt, and a tie. Joe Sylvester has on a tracksuit pants, which are like jogging pants, tracksuit pants, and an unironed t-shirt, meaning a wrinkly t-shirt. I face front again and straighten my back. Good posture is also on Alma's list of ways to make a good first impression. Joe Sylvester is slouching in his chair. Who would like to come up and show us how to solve the first problem? Mrs. Beam asks the class. I push my glasses up, take a deep breath and raise my hand. Chapter 10, now it's Joe's turn. Please don't call on me, please don't call on me, please don't call on me, I keep thinking but I can feel Mrs. Beam's head turning my way. I groan. I have a feeling I know where this is heading. I'm sure, I sure hope Miss Frost remember to tell Mrs. Beam about my APD. Nobody knew anything was wrong with me until I started kindergarten, the first week of kindergarten. I spent most of my time hiding in the coat closet with my hands over my ears. My teacher, Ms. Kane, thought I was homesick, but that wasn't it at all. I didn't want to go home. I just couldn't handle the noise. As it turns out, I have something called APD, which stands for Auditory Processing Disorder. And it means I have trouble listening. 
I'm not deaf. I can hear just fine. In fact, in a way, the problem is that my hearing is too good, which is why I go to Mrs. Frost. She gives me exercises to help my ears and my brain agree about what to listen to and what to tune out. She also has M&Ms in her office, peanut ones, and she lets me eat as many as I want. Boy, we would never be allowed to give you peanut M&Ms in this school. Mrs. Frost understands what's going on, but pretty much nobody else does. They don't understand how hard it is for me to follow directions when the electric pencil sharpener is going, or the door keeps slamming, or I'm worrying about whether someone is about to sneak up behind me and do something mean. They also don't, under don't understand how much I hate to be put on the spot. Like when a teacher calls on me and Mrs. Beam turns my way, I slide down in my seat. Even if she knows about my APD, it doesn't mean I'm safe. Sometimes teachers think they're doing you a favor by treating you like you're no different from everybody else. The thing is, I am different. I slide down even further in my seat, as low as I can go without falling out. All I care about is not getting called on. It's not that I can't do the math. Actually, I'm pretty good at math. But standing up in front of the class makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, I forget what I'm doing and I make mistakes. It turns out today is my lucky day, although, though, because the new kid shoots his hand straight up into the air like an arrow. He's wearing another white polo shirt, buttoned all the way up. Even the sleeves have been ironed flat. They're stiff and stick, stick out funny, like little wings. His desk is covered with a bunch of junk, including some shiny new mechanical pencils, which Dylan keeps eyeballing with a klepto gleam. A klepto is somebody who steals things. So Dylan keeps eyeing uh, with a klepto gleam. Mrs. Bean looks right at me, at least I think she's looking at me, but then she calls on the new kid instead. Ooh, that was close. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was the end of chapter 10. We're gonna stop there.